Yep, that's me. I am Math Guy Zero. You can Google me if you want. But, all right, this is going to be a quick video on some basic set theory. We should have called it number set theory. That's what we're going to be dealing with is the different numbers. But this is set theory, okay? So numbers exist on a number line, right? They, they have uh, an order where 3 is smaller than 7, etc., etc. On the negative side of the number line is just the opposite. Negative, seg negative 7 is less than negative 3. How it works on the opposite side, the negative side of the number line is the farther away from 0 it is, the least value it has. A good way to look at it is... If you owed money, which would you rather owe? $3 or $7? That kind of thing, okay? But let's get going on set theory. The first set that we're going to talk about is the natural numbers. These were the first ones used, you know, 100,000 years ago when, you know, people used to count sheep. So these are like the counting numbers. That's another way they were referred to. And it's, it's just the set of numbers that we would use to count. Right, one, two, fourteen. That big number, right? Anything that is used to count. Okay, so that's the set of natural numbers we use the capital N. The next set is whole numbers, and they contain all the natural numbers. One, two, 114, 167. They're just like the counting numbers with one exception. They have the number zero. Okay, so this is how you remember it. The whole numbers have a whole. <laughs> that's a zero. Okay, so whole numbers have zero plus all the natural numbers. And that's represented with the letter W. Next up is the integers. The integers are all the whole numbers and their opposites. And we represent it with the letter Z. Not the letter I, that's coming later, but the letter Z. Z stands for integers. And again, it has all the whole numbers and their opposites. So integers are negative whole numbers and positive whole numbers and of course zero. Good old zero. So those are the integers and again all of these numbers are on that number line somewhere. Coming up next is the rational numbers. We use the letter Q to represent the set of rational numbers. Q stands for quotient. I'm pretty sure it's Latin or something. All right, a rational number is defined by one number divided by another number with one exception. B can never be zero because we do not know how to divide by zero yet. I'm working on it. But So a rational number is any number that can be represented as a ratio or fraction, right? Fractions... And ratios, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but the word ratio is embedded in fractions. See that? Huh? Huh? Isn't that cool? <laughs> so fractions are ratios. So rational numbers include decimals, right? 0 0.03 is actually 3 over 10, right? Because that's the tenth. This first decimal place value is the tenths. So it's 3 tenths. So it includes all... Um, regular decimals, I don't want to go into a lot of detail at this moment, but like here's a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals means that they, they, they just go on forever, repeating the same digit or digits. This one is repeating three. These three little dots at the end are called an, uh, an ellipse. That means that this series goes on forever. Another way books write it is they put a bar over the last digit or digits that repeat. But this too is a rational number because we can represent that simply as one-third. If you divide one by three, you're going to get 0.3333 forever. Okay, So those are all rational numbers. Moving on, irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are represented with the letter I. I stands for irrational numbers. So a rational number could be represented as one number divided by another number as long as the, the bottom number was not zero. But irrational numbers cannot be represented like that. A few examples are the square root of 2. That is a non-repeating, non-ending decimal. Same with the square root of 3. 
Same with the square root of 5. You'll notice that the square root of 4 is not in there because the square root of 4 is 2 or negative 2. And that can be represented as a, as a rational number. In fact, all whole numbers, all integers, can be represented as a fraction or a ratio simply by putting them over a denominator of 1. Okay. Another famous irrational is our good friend pi, which is the ratio between a circle's circumference and its diameter. Again, it's a it's a non-ending, non-repeating decimal. 3.1415 blah 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 forever. And then there's another one. It's called E. This was recently discovered. Never heard of E before. E equals this. Ha <laughs> ha, this is calculus, okay? Don't let it don't let it frighten you, but it's the limit of this function, 1 plus 1 over n, raised to the n as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? But you're going to learn in the, your next algebra class that it roughly equals 2.72, okay? That's, it's like the 3.14 for pi. E, we use 2.72. It's pretty darn close. So those are your irrational numbers. And all of these numbers, all of the sets, the naturals, the wholes, the integers, the rationals, and the irrationals, they're called real numbers. What that means is they are can be found on this number line somewhere. Okay? And that's all of them. All of the numbers that we went over here are in the reals. So that's your fractions, your irrationals, your negative integers, positive integers, repeating decimals. They are all considered real numbers. The real number set is simply used by the number R. Okay? And that means any number on this number line. Example, we, we know that the square root of 2 never ends, but we know it's somewhere between 1 and 2. It would be between here somewhere. It's real tiny, but you'd be in there somewhere. So so those that's the R. So these are all the sets that we're going to go over in this class. Um, there is one more set that we will not go over in this class, but the next class we will. And it's a number that's not on the number line. Freaky, huh? And here's an example of one of those numbers, the square root of negative 4. In other words, the square root, you need to find a number, when you multiply it by itself, will give you the number underneath the radical. Most of us would say, is it negative 2? No, it's not, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So that's not the square root of negative 4. And again, this is what we this is what we call a complex number. And without going into a lot of detail, all numbers are in the set of complex numbers. But again, that is a college algebra concept. But that's it. Hope it helped. MGZ out.